All right, this will be number six from the 2010 BC exam, um, and it's a series question. Um, so the first thing is we have to just write down some terms of the series for cosine. You need to know cosine, sine, e to the x, and 1 over 1 minus x. Uh, make sure you don't walk in not knowing those. Um, so cosine, we know uh, cosine is an even function. It only has even powers of x in its uh, expansion. And since we have that memorized, we can just jot it down. Okay, and now what we need to do is use this to write a series for f of x, where f of x is defined to be uh, cosine of x minus 1 over x squared. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is uh, the minus 1 in the numerator here knocks off the 1 from the uh, cosine. And uh, then what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, divide every term that remains by x squared, so all the powers of x are reduced by 2. Um, so I get negative 1 over 2 factorial is my first term plus x squared over 4 factorial, and then minus x to the 4th over 6 factorial, and then plus dot dot dot, and then negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n minus 2 over the quantity 2n factorial. Um, Alright, so that's part A, and it's really just based on knowing the series for cosine and then manipulating that series, uh, which is a really common thing for them to ask you to do. Um, in part B, I need to uh, use the series to figure out if there's a max or a min, and uh, with series questions, the second derivative test is really important um, because it's the easiest way to go about doing this. So I need this series again, so I'm going to copy it over. Um, if you didn't get this right in the first part, you should use the series that you wrote down anyway and hope for the best. Um, because uh, the, the graders will read with you, provided that you're not being completely ridiculous or reducing the problem to something you know too easy. So I know that by looking at the series, f prime of 0 is 0. How do I know that? Well, there is no x to the first term, and therefore the coefficient must have been 0, it disappeared. Um, I know, because I know Taylor series, that the coefficient of x squared is the second derivative at 0 divided by 2 factorial. So the second derivative divided by 2 factorial is 1 over 4 factorial. And uh, that gives me that the second derivative is 2 factorial over 4 factorial, which the only thing I really need to know here is if it's greater than or less than 0, and that's obviously greater than 0. Therefore, by the second derivative test, um, I can say that f of x must have a minimum because it has a horizontal tangent line, and it is concave up. All right, so that would be my answer to part b. So far, so good. Um, in part c, I have to write a series for a new function which is an accumulation function, so it's 1 plus the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So I, again, need that series that I wrote for f of x. So I could see why you'd be feeling pretty bad about yourself if you didn't get part a of this. Um, and again, just, you know, keep going with whatever you came up with. Um, and again, hope for the best. I'm trying to get every point you can here. All right, so that's my series. And what I need, though, is I just need to write the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for g of x. So g of x, I'm going to have to integrate what I just wrote down for f of x. So I really only need up to x to the fourth because I'm going to use a power rule. So I need those terms. So g of x is 1 because, you know, that's where it starts. Plus, if I integrate negative 1 over 2 factorial, I get uh, minus x over 2 factorial. If I integrate x squared over 4 factorial, I get plus x cubed over 3 times 4 factorial. And then if I integrate this last term, I get minus x to the fifth over 5 times 6 factorial. I'm not going to simplify that, um, because there's really no reason to. Um, one thing to note, though, it, is that uh, I didn't deal with a plus c here. I didn't deal with plus c because uh, the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt is a definite integral. So those plus c's are going to cancel out. Um, and I pretty much always deal with these problems uh, the way that I did this problem here. Um, there's another way to do it where you actually deal with plus c. It's a little more writing, which is why I kind of avoid it. Um, all right, so the next thing that we're asked is, we're actually told that uh, if you evaluate this Taylor series here at, um, well, this is actually a polynomial, but if you evaluate the series, uh, you get an alternating series um, where the terms decrease to zero, uh, so it's convergent. So that's if you evaluate it at one. Um, and then we're asked to do a couple things at one. So 
I want to approximate g of 1 using the first three terms of the series, which uh, I'm not even going to simplify, so this is kind of a dumb question. Uh, so I get that, and I have no idea what that is, but I don't need to know. Um, and then the next thing is I have to uh, show that the error that I get using this estimate is less than 1 over 6 factorial. Uh, well, now I'm just going to write some stuff. So the alternating series error, I know, is um, less than the first term left off. It's really less than the absolute value of the first term, I guess, depending on how you look at alternating series. Um, so the first term that I'm leaving off here is uh, 1 over 5 times 6 factorial. So I know that the error is less than that. And uh, that is definitely less than 1 over 6 factorial, um, which is what we were required to show. And so we're done. So not a lot to do in that particular part, but uh, you know you have to know your alternating series error if you're going to be successful with that one. Anyway, uh, that's the whole problem, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.